All right, let's get into this. Good morning, my name is Robert Blankenship. Welcome to the Voice of Truth. This is Sunday, October the 23rd, 2022, and I'm coming to you on a different day. Usually I come on Saturdays, but again, yesterday was a very busy day here in the Blankenship household with football. And we're looking at chapter 45 of the book of Ezekiel on the millennial reign of Christ. Join me as we sing and preach about that. And let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we book of Ezekiel. We're talking more about the plans that God has for that millennial temple during Jesus' reign. We looked at last weekend about the instructions for the priest. Okay, so uh, in Ezekiel, if you just read this chapter, you read chapter 44, 43, you just read the whole, um, you know, the whole book of Ezekiel. Uh, there's no mention at all of a thousand year reign of Christ. It's not there. This is 100% imaginary. There's nothing, and just hold on, let them talk. Priest, and then <clears throat> what they were to do, and then we're looking today at some of the things of the office of the laws of weights and offerings in that millennial temple that's given out to uh, the offerings for the priest to have, the prince it talks about, it's not the prince of peace, not talking about Jesus, it's talking about uh, a prince. It could be David, but it's some person um, that uh, has lived here on this life. Yeah, it, it's a prince is a prince. It's not rocket science. Come on. I, I, I tend to think that it may not be David because he could never have the office of priest in the Old Testament, though. I, I take that back to saying that. Uh, now that I think about it, it's probably somebody who's in that millennial reign that is a mortal, okay, a mortal person that has entered in because they have sinned. Think about that. He's saying that an immortal person is going to sin. Uh, that's pure insanity right there that's not supported anywhere in the Bible the idea that we're going to be transformed or we're going to be changed from corruptible to incorrupt uh, oh, what's that for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so sin is corruptible sin is corruption when we take off this corruptible body, the sinful body, we are clothed with an incorruptible body that never sins, has no desire for sin. Jesus makes all things new. It's pure insanity to suggest that we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye and then we're just gonna go on sinning sin sin that's not in the Bible man it's not in the Bible at all alright so uh, this is unbelievable really in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall ra be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed incorruptible means there is no sin in us any longer we're changed and, and you'll hear this when it talks about it uh, more so in chapter 46 that we look at next weekend but chapter 45 talks about it it's for the prince the priest and for the people all right so just just so look if you're reading ezekiel 45 and you read all this that is um, being laid out for them this is all stuff that's happened this has already happened this was uh, for that 
time period. This is all before baby Jesus. This is not something, this is not instructions for after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is instruction for them at that time. And you see that the offerings are made. The, this is for the Passover. Passover is already fulfilled. Jesus has already provided himself as uh, the offering uh, to God to cover our sins. This is, I mean, this is already all fulfilled. Why will we go back to it? It's insanity. Moreover, in verse 1, it says, When ye shall divide by lot the land for inheritance, ye shall offer an oblation unto the Lord. Okay, an oblation is something, a covering, right? It, it's something that you're going to put in place of the sin that has been in your life. Um, this was back in the Old Covenant, and they're doing it for some reason as a memorial, I believe, in the millennial reign of Christ. For, for some reason, hell, I don't know. I, uh, because Christ has died long back, and he's covered our sins as long as we confess them. Uh, uh, no, no. Do you hear that? Covered our sins as long as we confess them. He covers our sin uh, if we uh, believe in him. So we can confess them all day long. Uh, it doesn't mean our sins are covered. We have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And just like what we read in Matthew 7, Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. Just confessing your sins and just saying, Lord, Lord. You have to believe with all your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ and you have to be born again this is something that only God can do only God can save you you can't save yourself but nevertheless um, Jesus covers all your sins Jesus covered all your sins on the cross by the blood of Jesus all our sins are covered. It's not by confession, it's by the death of Jesus Christ. Uh, for the people of God. He died for everyone, but only for the people of God will he cover those sins if they are confessed to God in the name of the Lord Jesus, nope. right? We never confess nope, them. Right. Somebody never confesses their sins, then it's not going to be covered. He died for them. You think about the cross, the, uh, the 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 thief on the cross. He said, "Lord." He turned to the Lord and said, "Remember me when you enter into paradise," or something to that effect. I can't remember. What's he say? Let's find out. And we'll go to twenty three forty something or another. And. And he said unto the Lord Jesus, or he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. There's nothing about confessing. All, I mean, they would have had it been there probably for what? Um, a thousand years for that guy to sit there and remember all his sins and confess them. There was no way he was going to accomplish that. And it's not about confessing your sin. It's about believing on the Lord Jesus. And that simple belief that that man had at that moment was su sufficient for him to be saved. And Jesus says, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. In that day, that night, he died. So, there's nothing about confession here at all. For that person still. But yet, they don't accept the forgiveness that he gives. And so, there's only one recourse for it, and hell will be the hell. Right, I think he goes on here. I think that's enough. Uh, the, the bottom line is, you know, I, yeah, I appreciate people going to 
the Old Testament to try to support their idea of a thousand year zombie reign or whatever it is that they're preaching. Now you're, you're saying these guys are immortal and they're sinners. How is that different than zombies? Zombies never die. They just, you know, go around killing people. They're sinners. So they're immortal and they're full of sin. It's the same thing as a zombie. You know, this is why I'm going on and on about this zombie doctrine that's not supported by the Bible at all. People are watching too much HBO and not spending enough time reading their Bible, in my opinion. There's nothing here in the book of Ezekiel. Not at, Certainly not in 45, man. It's almost as if you have no idea what the Bible says and you're going solely off of what somebody else is teaching. Because this stuff is not in the Bible.